Hello and welcome back. Well, it's been a while since I've shot a video. This is a new decade, 2020, January, so I thought it'd be a good time to start. And I've got a new project, uh, building a bead filter that I want to put in after uh, the two swirl filters that I have. I've got a friend that uh, was raised in tilapia, and he's getting out of the business, and he's got three to four hundred top tilapia, some are fingerlings, some are about four inches, um, so he wanted to give them to me, so didn't want to pass that up, so quickly put together two more tanks, and going to have to do some filtrations uh, additional um, to help take out some of the solids, so uh, first I thought I would uh, give you a overview of how my system works, and let you see that and I'll try to do it quickly um, and if you have any questions on that just uh, let me know so I'll turn it around here and uh, we will take a look at it okay first let me uh, say I've got a big mess in here uh, I've been just moving stuff around trying to get these new tanks in and it's a total mess so please excuse that so here's uh, my original tank over here, then I've added these two in here. So that's where our new tilapia are going to go in. This one, I've had uh, goldfish in here, and they've just been doing great. They just tolerate the, the pH differences and the temperature, um, so they're, they're great to start with. So I'm going to try the tilapia, and I know you got to keep them a little warmer. But uh, okay, on my fish tanks, um, the water comes in from the sump. So here's where the water comes in this line here from my sump tank. And it comes up into here. This line here is oxygen. So that's coming from that oxygen generator over there. So what this does, water comes in and it mixes the oxygen in here in this four inch pipe. Um, so it helps dissolve the oxygen in there and then it comes out right down on the inside. And then on the drains, so I've got a top drain so it gets any solids floating on top. And then also on the bottom, I drain it out here. So it comes from the, the top, comes down into the same line here. And this all goes over to the swirl filters. So that's kind of, kind of how that works. Um, so let me show you over here at the swirl filters. And again, excuse my mess here. So that drain line from the fish tanks, it comes in through here and goes into um, these two swirl filters. And I've got oxygen going into those also, to try to help get the solids to settle down. And these I typically will drain, uh, depends on how much I'm using in for the plants, but usually 50 gallons a week. During the summer I'll do uh, two or three times more than that because uh, of evaporation and all that. So from the two swirl filters, so when I clean those I just open up the valve down there and it runs into my digester. Um, my digester, all the solids go over here. I've got four of these uh, IBC tanks, 300 gallons, they're all in ground over here. The first tank the solids go into is the digester. So they go into there and they get broken down and then that overflows into the next tank is where I introduce a lot of oxygen. And that helps break it down, um, does all the, all the good stuff that it does. And then that overflows into these two other tanks and from those they're pumped out into the plant grow beds. The vertical towers, the troughs, um, all that. And then that water circulates back around, goes back into this tank, 
and then it just continues like that. So back on the fish system, now once that water is drained, the solids out of the fish system, it goes into the plant system and it never comes back. So it's a split aquaponics system. So a big advantage of that is I can have different pH levels um, and uh, the EC levels at the at where I want for the plants and then where I want it for the fish. So that's the big advantage of that. So, um, okay. So this from the swirl filters that comes over to this tank and this was just originally going to be a heater settlement tank and then what I end up finding was I was having a lot more solids come in here that the swirl filters were taking out so I added these two filters here and they are um, they've got this material here that's on the inside so that's a pretty coarse screen that will collect on the solids on there and then wrapped around this um, these are paint strainer socks so I gotta clean those about every two weeks more often sometimes um, but those just come off I take them over to the sink and they just all the solids wash down into the digester so that's all cycled through there so that runs from this tank and then these tanks I've got 100 foot coils of PEX tubing and that's how I heat these uh, during the winter time and then during the summertime I'm able to reverse that and run uh, groundwater through there to help keep the tanks cool for the fish so that flows from here over into this tank and this one will have uh, K1 media in it I have to expand into that I'm currently just using one tank with K1 so uh, it will have to add as I adding more fish um, so that will break down all the nitrates and ammonia and the, all that good stuff that it does this tank is my sump tank, so this is where it all starts here, pumps out of that, goes to the fish tanks, around to the swirl filters, back to the biological filters, and it just makes a complete cycle. So with the added fish I'm putting here, it's going to be a, a lot bigger load, so I want to build a bead filter to see if I can help clean, catch more of those solids. So that's what this is going to be. And I shot another little video on, on cutting this tank and, and bowing the, the bottom out here, but this will drain down out of here and it'll run into the line there and it drains into the digester just like these tanks do. So it's going to come from these two swirl filters and it's going to come into here and that will the top will be filled with K1 media and my plan is is probably not to have oxygen in there I'll just have to maybe a little bit but force the K1 media to set on top and the the solids to collect on those and then then the clean water to filter through and then run over into this tank here like it currently is and then when I need to clean it I'll just drain this down and this might be something I'll have to do every couple days um, it will be about 25 gallons that I'll have in here and I'll clean that with I'll drop some air stones in there and try to knock all the solids off of the K1 media and then uh, shoot it out with the hose to drain it down so that's kind of the plan now whether that's gonna work I don't know <laughs> but it's gonna be a test so I'll let you see how my test goes and learn from my mistakes I've made plenty of them <laughs> so that's where I'm at so I'm gonna get started on this here I'll go ahead and post post this here 
uh, along with the other initial video on cutting the uh, that barrel so if you have any questions let me know any suggestions I'm always learning so anyhow um, if you'd like to if you like this you want to see more about this just let me know and be sure to subscribe and click on like if you'd like it if you don't well that's okay too um, so look forward to you seeing you next time and thanks for watching